Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Ant Canada Ant Channel. This is your Ant Nerd, Mikey Bustos, bringing you another Ant video. Thank you guys for tuning in. Now, if you watched our video last week, you saw that we had moved a colony of Diacama ants into one of our new Ant Canada hybrid nests, which will be coming to the store this month. And also, if you did catch our video last week, you know that this species is a queenless species of ant, meaning their colonies consist of workers and no real queen. In fact, these diacama ants can appoint a queen, but she looks exactly like the other workers. This reproductive worker is known as a gammergate. Now, when I had first moved this colony into the hybrid nest, I had no idea whether a gammergate was in the colony. But two weeks later, we made an amazing discovery, and that is that the ants had begun to lay eggs, which then means that the possibility of a gammergate being in this colony is very high. Now, if you look at this ant over there in the middle, you'll see that she's protecting and caring for a group of eggs. I've counted four eggs. And it's really exciting because there's a possibility that these eggs are fertile, which means in this colony of six members is a gammergate. Now, it's also possible that all of these workers are simply barren workers and aren't a gammergate, and that these eggs are trophic and may turn into male ants. But I'm hoping not. I'm really hoping that one of these females is indeed gravid, that she's the gammergate, and she has survived being extracted from the wild. Another possibility is this group of workers might have been a group of just workers and they decided to elect a Gammergate among them. And that Gammergate may have made it some time in the past, but had her fertile egg-laying abilities suppressed somehow because, well, perhaps maybe there was another more dominant Gammergate that had elected herself or had assumed the position of egg-laying Gammergate. But, you know, in the absence of a Gammergate, this species is known to elect a gammergate among them. So it's really exciting for me because I want to see if these eggs will turn into workers. And if so, that means that this colony will grow from just simply a few workers. Now the colony has been doing really well and it's really interesting because I've noticed that there's always one worker that's watching the eggs. I don't know which one of these workers is the egg laying gammergate but I know she's here um, but I did notice that one worker is always caring for and watching over this brood here the group of eggs and another worker is always coming by to check to see and make sure that everything's okay that the one watching over the eggs is okay and uh, it's really Really neat I've noticed that they even take shifts now if you look here you'll see that this worker just came along and kind of boxed out the other worker and said hey it's time for you to take a break I'll uh, take over from here so I've noticed that these diacama ants take shifts at watching the eggs so it's really hard to say which one is the gammergate and again there's always a second worker coming by just to make sure that everything's okay it's really really neat now these ants are really large ants, and even though they are a queenless species, um, completely composed of workers, uh, they seem to work like any ordinary colony. It's uh, pretty amazing. You know, they work cooperatively at gathering food, and they'll share food, of course, through trophallaxis. As you can see here, it's kind of like a kissing action that the ants do, where they can exchange food from their social stomach to the new ant that wants to eat. See that? It's really, really cool. I really love watching these ants. Now these diacama ants, if you saw our last video, are being housed in a Campanotis version of our hybrid nest. I acquired them from a friend of mine who is a curator at a museum here in Manila. And these ants were collected from the mountains. And so they do really well in an air-conditioned room, which is really interesting. They thrive in the cold. Whereas most ants here in the Philippines would die if you kept them in an air-conditioned room. So this colony is being kept at an ambient temperature of 16 to 18 degrees Celsius. And they're doing really well. When there is food outside, they will uh, cooperatively help subdue the food. Um, as you can see here, this one ant discovers the cockroach that I've put in there. And then eventually all the other workers come running out and they come and help. I love the way the workers hold their antennae up while they're stinging their prey. It's kind of cool. I've decided to keep this outworld bare because I kind of want to see what they do with their garbage and 
what they do with the disposed dead ants. And like any other colony, they do establish specific uh, garbage sites and burial sites, which is really interesting. Now this hybrid nest is about 4 inches by 4 inches, uh, which might appear small, but it actually holds quite a bit of ants. Now, if you look here, these ants are about just under 2 centimeters. They are huge ants. And this formicarium can easily fit about 100 ants or more of these large ants. So despite the small size of the formicarium, it does hold a lot of ants comfortably. So there you go guys, hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy watching these rule breakers of the ant world, these diacama ants. Enjoy! Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my ant video, it really means a lot to me. Please remember to subscribe if you liked what you saw, and also check out some of my other videos on this channel. We've got a video for the parents, for all of you kids who might be having problems convincing your parents to let you keep ants, have them watch that video. And also, be aware, don't make any of these top 10 ant keeping mistakes. So please watch our top 10 ant keeping mistakes video. Thanks so much guys! It's Ant Love Forever.